Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venicia. This is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast and today I am joining you for a very special episode of the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast, which is not a regular episode with the usual finished items, works in progress, etc. Today is all about uh, past sweaters that I've knitted and in particular my favorite ones. So I've decided to do a little bit of a year in review but very much shortened and just focusing on the positives of the year, my nine favorite garments that I've knitted. I've kept it to sweaters and cardigans just to make things again a bit simpler and also because these I guess are the pieces that most people are interested in. I know that you guys were really enthusiastic about my videos all about the flops of the year, you can check it out here if you haven't already and I thought it was only fair to give the stars that shone the brightest a piece in the spotlight just as much as I liked to reflect on the failures of the year. I think it will be really interesting as well maybe for you and inspiring to talk about why these pieces were such a hit for me and also to answer the questions that everybody always asks about how well have they worn. I didn't do any sort of year in review yet for 2023. I didn't do an everything I did in 2023 so this will be a good way to do them justice to make sure that we keep appreciating our pieces and not move on too quickly onto the next new big shiny things and we have to appreciate what we've made. Before we start just a little bit of housekeeping if you want to find me on social media you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram at the woolly worker. If you want to support the channel and say thanks for what I do you can do so by maybe offering me a pattern from my Ravelry wishlist or supporting me on Ko-fi or Ko-fi for the price of a cup of coffee. Links to both will be down below in the description. And while you're there in the description, you can also check out all the details about the pieces that I will mention. Every single one of them has been a finished item on the podcast, so I will also link back to that episode where you will see the item uh, modeled and photographed and also obviously talked about at length. So if you want to delve deeper into any of the items that I will showcase today, make sure to check out the description for those details. For every item, the structure that I was thinking this video would take is that I would go in chronological order, so start with my favorite from the um, January 2023 basically and then work my way towards the present. I will talk about the pattern, the yarn, the wear of time and the knitting process experience and if there's anything that I would do differently next time if I were to remake this piece. And then I also thought it would be quite fun to maybe give each piece a score. I will rank each of these variables out of 10 and then add up the scores and at the end we'll tally up and see which of these is my absolute all-time favorites. Of 2023. So I hope that makes sense, I hope that you're excited. Um, I will be trying on every piece as I talk about them, so you probably will see me getting warmer and warmer every minute of the video, but that's okay, I'm, I'm willing to do it. And I'll also be putting maybe one or two photos of when we photographed the item back in the days, because obviously like those photos are really nice and maybe will showcase the design a bit better than I can now with this lighting and this angle, etc. So yeah, I'll, I'll choose one or two photos, I won't go too overboard, it'll be hard for me because I just find it really difficult, difficult to, to choose. If you're new to the channel, then welcome, and if you want to check out my other videos, I do a regular podcast episode every other week. But yeah, let's get started. I'll just go change into the first sweater. So the first item that you can see here is my Daily Pullover by Pola Pereira. I made this one in, um, I started it in December 2022, finished it in January 2023. So I think it may have been my first garment of the year that I had finished at all and it is one of my favorites. There has since been some erratas that have been published which is really good because a couple of my notes from the project was that there were some mistakes notably in the v-neck instructions for that little center double decrease. Um, I did some modifications to the pattern, I made a twisted rib detail which wasn't um, called for. I also skipped the short rows at the back to lower the hem because other ravelers said that it didn't add anything and I think I lengthened the body. Um, I really enjoy this sweater. The pattern was okay. I didn't like the fact that the sizes were named after the final bust circumference. For example, my size was the 37.5 inches. It doesn't roll off the tongue as much as like size 2 or 3, which I usually am. The pattern layout, the instructions, it was kind of 
important to keep track of where you were and making sure that you were reading the right line and the right number for your size, but that's fine. Um, like I said, there were a couple of errors in the, in, in the pattern, but these have since been rectified, which I, I really do appreciate when designers do that. So uh, the pattern was really good. Then uh, my only note again was that there have been some short rows at the back neck, which I've learned over time, if you're doing a v-neck, it doesn't seem that necessary to do that. And in fact, what you may have is that a bit of puckering or bunching or just excess fabric, which obviously is what the short rows create. And I found that for the entirety of the knitting process, that little bump at the back was really bothering me. And I wasn't sure if it was going to always look weird from the back when I was wearing it. Thankfully, some revelers again had noted that when they blocked the sweaters, they noticed that that little bump was gone. And so I was really relieved to hear that. And I must say that with blocking, it did get better, but I still wish that I had skipped it. So that's what I would recommend if you're going to do this pattern. Feel free to skip the short rows um, everywhere and it'll still be a really great fitting sweater. I really like the depth of the raglan. I've, again, with time, learned to find that... Um, Raglins aren't necessarily my favorite type of sweaters anymore, especially because if you're going for um, a non-oversized look, it may be harder to get right. But I think that this is really right. It doesn't have too, too much excess fabric at the underarm. It doesn't make that thing where if I lift up my arms, the sweater comes all the way up. So yoke depth is really good for that. Sleeve, uh, I think they may have been really great at the time. And then with wear, they've shrunk a little bit, which I think is something that a lot of people have been noticing happening. So I could, if I wanted to go back and add some length, although actually I have used up all my yarn because I used it for scraps later on. So I actually can't do that, but I don't mind the kind of bracelet length because of the V-neck anyway, it's not a sweater I would wear in the, war the, the coldest of weather because it doesn't keep me the warmest. I actually really like this wool because it keeps me relatively temperature regulated for, for someone like me who struggles a lot with that. So that was all about the pattern and now move on about the yarn, which is Kinross 4 ply from Wee County Yarns in the color granite. I was really inspired by Rebecca from the Crea Bear when she made this pattern and she used that yarn. I think she made hers in porridge. Uh, I really wanted this kind of really basic jumper. I'll actually stand up to show you a little bit what it looks like. So it's made in fingering weight and because I was off during the holidays, it didn't actually take me that long to make this. It did feel a bit of a slog, especially when you're doing all those pearls for shaping the v-neck and then when you're doing the long body with all of these stitches. So it was a bit of a slog, but the resulting fabric is heavenly. It is extremely soft due to the yarn, which feels like cashmere after you block it. I really enjoy working with the yarn even pre-block. I find it quite soothing on my hands, it's not scratchy or itchy or anything, it's just kind of really dry. It doesn't feel oily like some um, yarns can feel when they're coming from the mill. So I really really recommend this yarn, it's a pleasure to work with, a pleasure to wear, a pleasure to block. Um, I like this color because it is grey, which was boring to work with, but it's very wearable and um, it, it's not a flat grey, it has a little bit of heathering and whites and darker areas, which means that you can't really see if it picks up dust or dirt or um, little fibers, etc., which I'll talk about in the future. Um, another one of the jumpers I will showcase was made in Kinross for ply, but it shows more of the little debris that I'm picking up. This one doesn't, so again, I can recommend the color granite. Um, the length I'm happy with, I probably could have made it a little bit more cropped. I feel like it's at that awkward stage where it's not quite a long sweater. I guess it's just regular length and maybe I wish it was just like a, sitting a little bit high, higher on my hips, but um, it doesn't risk uncovering my skin if I move around too much. So I don't even know if I, if I would actually change the length. I really, really like this jumper. I have worn it a lot. It's my go-to when I'm going somewhere and I think I'm, I run the risk of, of being too hot if I take another one of my knitted jumpers. So if I want to wear a hand knit, I probably will reach for that Kinross for ply to wear out and about. The thing I don't love about this yarn is that sometimes when I'm folding my arms, 
it leaves a bit of creases, but that also is the case with a bunch of other sweaters, so maybe it's just a nature of wool and it will have those little indents of the folds of the fabric, which again is not a big deal. Uh, in terms of the durability of this yarn, it has worn extremely well. It fuzzes up a little bit as opposed to pilling per se. It really looks almost as good as new and I have worn this inside and outside, under coats, with my bags. I think it's a testament to both the pattern and the yarn. It is extremely wearable and I need to make more. So I would absolutely make this pattern again, simply in a different color, probably the same yarn. I would do all those modifications that I talked about and maybe skip the short rows at the back because it's a little bit weird. Maybe I would make it in normal rib and not twisted rib, just for that little bit of variety. Also, the pattern actually has you start with a provisional cast on, but there was no need for that. And you can just do a long tail cast on because you're picking up the stitches afterwards anyway to make your ribbing and if anything having the long tail cast on provides that extra bit of stability with the um, edge as opposed to picking up the stitches from the provisional cast on. So yeah, lots of little things that you would modify with the pattern but overall the fit is excellent and I'm really really happy with this pattern. It's a little bit pricier maybe than other patterns that I've seen going around but I would say that it is worth the money for a staple. So let's move on to the second sweater that is one of my favorites. This is sweater number 23 by My Favorite Things Knitwear and it was knitted in Double Sunday by Send This Garn. So again, I'll try and stay focused and I'll talk about the pattern first. So this pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear is a drop shoulder sweater with a nice shoulder increase detail that is the flagship item of this. It has some short rows um, to shape the sleeve cap and uh, some deep ribbing details. A double folded neck and yeah I think that's pretty much it for the features of this sweater. I think it was supposed to be a 17 stitch gauge. I made mine in a, an 18 stitch gauge so a bit um, thinner wool because I didn't I didn't hold any strand of mohair uh, with it. I think the original is maybe in maybe heavy merino by Knitting for Olive and mohair. I actually made mine in a DK. This is double Sunday by Sendless Garn because I have quite a loose gauge so it kind of all worked out. I made the size extra small and it still has a fair amount of ease. I started this in January and also finished it in January, so it was quite a quick knit. Again, because the gauge is, is quite loose. I really enjoyed working this pattern. I love my favorite things knitwear patterns. The layout of them, the amount of detail that she goes into, which is like not too much, not too little, the little tips that she gives every now and then, the sectioning of things, the, the layout. Like I really appreciate her patterns. I know what I sign up for when I buy one and they're very reliable and trustworthy. She's really successful and I think that she deserves it for that kind of patterns. There's only very, very rarely mistakes in them. Um, if I remember correctly, actually, there is a mistake in this one where she tells you to knit the sleeve to a certain length and do the ribbing to a certain length, but those two lengths don't add up to like the final length of the sleeve. So um, I put on my Ravelry notes what I ended up doing for it, but it's not a huge deal because usually people make modifications anyway as to the length of the sleeves that they do. Um, I can't remember if I cropped this. I think I was playing yarn chicken and I ended up using almost all of the nine skeins of wool that I had bought and I liked this pattern so much that I ended up making this jumper a second time and that was in 2024 and this year it was my red jumper so that again is a testament to how much I really like this pattern I love the shoulder increase detail my favorite things knitwear has that detail on a lot of her other sweaters so again if you're not a fan of this shape but you like that look you can definitely check her uh, store out so I'll stand up to show you a little bit of this it's a really nice sort of muted blue from Sendless Garn. It's uh, very, very muted. It's quite dark and it shows a bit differently in the different lights. So the yarn is Double Sunday by Send This Garn. It's the color 6580. I really like this yarn. I know it's a little bit controversial of a yarn because a lot of people swear by it and you can count me in that camp. And some people say that it pills horribly. So I've shown here a little bit on the camera what the 
bottom of the sleeves look like. It is a little bubbly, it really isn't anything that a depiller wouldn't get rid of and for the amount of comfort that this provides I think that it's completely fair enough and justified for a wool to be so soft there must be some kind of price you have to pay. I personally don't think that it is that bad but your mileage may vary. I like the fact that this is extremely comfortable to wear at home. I'm someone that's quite sensitive to itchy, scratchy wools and I really value comfort. So this is something that I wouldn't think twice about wearing over, you know, a store-bought cozy jumper that you'd wear at home. And at least that one would make me feel a little bit more put together or proud to wear my knitting. So I'm really happy to have this piece in my wardrobe. It really confirmed again I would use Double Sunday without hesitation. I had a couple of sweater quantities of Double Sundays which I've since changed my mind about in terms of the color. So I destashed them and I'm saving those funds to then buy another sweater quantity in the color that I really want when the time comes in the future. So it's definitely a yarn that you will see in the future on my channel because I will 100% make a sweater like this again. It's a basic, it's comfortable, it's not like show boasty or anything, it doesn't feel like a huge showstopper, but it doesn't need to be. I guess I don't know if I would remake this piece again again because I don't need three of the same sweater, but it was good enough to be remade one more time. So that probably should tell you a lot about it. I think in the next iteration I had cropped it a little bit, uh, again because of maybe yarn chicken reasons, but also because I think this piece works well um, either as an oversized look or as a bit of a trendy cropped sweater also. So I'm not sure if there's anything else to say about this jumper. It is a basic, it is successful, I like it. The yarn has not worn as well as the daily pullover that I just showed, but it doesn't put me off at all. And I think the color has stood the test of time. It still feels kind of like a neutral, same as the gray that I just showed. So it's something that I still see myself loving just as much as I love it this year as I did last year and in future years. It just feels like something that just I'm not going to change my mind about. So I can confidently say that this was a success of a project. So let's move on to the third sweater. This is the Eclair Pullover by uh, Karen Fernandez from Beautiful Knitters and it's made in Isiger Eco Soft in the color 4S. I made this sweater again in January and my records tell me that I finished it in a week. Again, I was off for the holidays, which is pretty crazy. So um, I'll just show you now, I guess, just to vary the timings a little bit. Here it is. It's got a really nice split hem, which you can see like this. And I really like the detail that the front bit is overlapping the back bit, which I think is a lovely, lovely detail. The split hem actually starts right where the um, underarm is, so there's no rounds to be knitted in the round after you split for your arms. Otherwise, it's a raglan, pretty deep raglan, I would say. This is my underarm, this is the bottom of the raglan. And obviously, if I lift my um, arms, a bunch of things happen. It's got some balloon sleeves, which are simply shaped with rapid decreases at the end. And again, I'm noticing now that the sleeves seem to have shrunk a little bit. Um, but again, it's not something that is necessarily to be worn uh, against the elements in the depth of winter. The finishings are actually also twisted rib and um, there's no way you can do a tubular bind off with this so it's just bound off in pattern at the bottom. Um, there's a nice little twisted rib detail that runs alongside the split hem. It's a really lovely jumper. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. It doesn't hold your hand as much as other patterns do, so the knitting process, maybe you had to pay a bit more attention, especially for that whole thing that happens at the underarm with the split hem. You have to be careful of how you pick up stitches to do this, but it is so worth it. There is a tutorial video, which I thought was a little, maybe not the clearest, but at least it was there. And I really love the fit of this. It's super comfortable. It's super trendy. It makes me feel like a cool girl with the big split hem. Um, I had some issues in the past where the neck was a little too wide and too open. And I actually went back and added an elastic for the first time in one of my jumpers. And I 
I don't love it to be honest I feel like it is a little too chalky and I feel like maybe that is what is pulling up the sleeves higher or am I dreaming um, it does feel a bit less comfortable since I added the elastic but it does mean it cinches in more and I don't know maybe it wouldn't show as much of what I'm wearing underneath if I wasn't wearing a camisole and I was wearing a t-shirt. I think what really again makes this pattern the success that it is is the wool that I've used. So the wool is Isayur Eco Soft which is a blown yarn that is made uh, with alpaca fibers in a cotton net. This color is a bunch of different colors together. I mean you always have the white of the cotton net and then you have this kind of grayish brown. Uh, muted once again kind of medium tone. It looks very marled and not like a unified color. I, I really really like this color although I, I did get a little bored of it. I think maybe I would have rather it was just a gray. So if I were to remake this sweater and I'm actually really tempted to do so I would make it in a either like a really nice creamy white or a light gray. Um, the problem again is that it would be nice to to find maybe some kind of alternative to Isayur Eco Soft, maybe it drops air, I've seen some people use. Overall, I think it's a really refreshing take on the classic raglan jumper. It has the balloon sleeves, the split hem, the twisted rib, that crazy yarn that isn't used in that many patterns. It doesn't require a second strand. It's quick to do. The pattern is not full of mistakes. It's just maybe a little bit more confusing to get used to if you're really used to petite knit and my favorite things knitwear like I was at the time. I would 100% make it again. I probably would if I didn't have that many other things on my queue that maybe had more priority. What I really like about the yarn is that it is really soft and therefore wearable. In uh, Again, in outings, in public, in, in dates, I feel like it doesn't make me overheat. Again, because of the yarn, which has a cotton content, and also because of the split hem, which offers a lot of ventilation. And maybe, yeah, that the wrists are quite exposed, especially um, if I have my arms up like that, they just drop down, maybe because it's not that cinched in. So, um, yeah, the yarn has worn really well, even though it wasn't held with anything. I don't see any pilling. Uh, maybe the yarn is a little bit more fuzzy than it used to be at the start. I know some people have complained, for example, that drops air with wear. The fibers contained in the net kind of all disappear with time. So for example, at the armpit, maybe you would just have the cotton net that would be left there and no color. This isn't the case with EcoSoft. So maybe that's what you also pay for when you're paying the uh, added, like when you pay that, that extra price, that extra cost, is getting that certainty that your armpits will be safe from any um, disappearance of fibers. So yeah, I would say that this looks uh, good as new. It's not a fabric that has much stitch definition anyway, so it's not something that you'd notice if it was a bit raggedy. So yeah, I guess you're having to sacrifice that perfectly polished look when you're using that sort of yarn, and in exchange you get something that looks the same as it always did for a very long period of time. So that one is a little bit more trendy and less basic, so I don't know, maybe I would get bored of that split hem after a while, but it's certainly something that is comfortable and I don't see my skin changing to that type of uh, sensitivity and I also don't see myself really getting bored of that color because uh, it's so neutral. So once again a big success in the wardrobe and I'm super happy to have it and uh, this pattern is kind of going under the radar and I wish more people did it. I would like to see what it looks like in those crazy colors because Isayur only has those maybe six or seven colors in that yarn range and I'd like to see um, if people use different yarns and substitute that. Let's go to the next sweater. The next pattern is not a sweater, it's actually a cardigan and funnily enough, it's a coincidence, it's in the same yarn and it is my Levitate wrap by My Favorite Things Knitwear. So of course, once again, a My Favorite Things Knitwear pattern and this is actually in May that I finished that. So I don't know what happened from, since, uh, from January to May, why I didn't make any sweaters that are making the cut in this video. Was I in a period of doing things that were really trendy but didn't end up making me hugely happy with them. But yeah, it's crazy to have a big gap between the, the, the two jumpers. 
So anyway, this one I really like. You may have seen me wear it a lot or talk about it a lot. It was something that I wasn't planning on casting on that year because it hadn't been released yet. It was part of the Isier Archives collection where a lot of designers were uh, coming together to, to share and release patterns based on Isier yarns. They were really heavily promoting the trio line, which is sort of a lyocell linen cotton blend. Um, so this one is made with Isayur Eco Soft, and this time in the color 8S, and Isayur Trio 1 in the color Chestnut, and Chestnut is made of, yeah, linen, cotton, and rayon from bamboo. So the pattern, first things first, it's a cropped cardigan that, uh, yeah, sits pretty much right at the hip. A lot of people have complained maybe that they underestimated uh, how cropped it was, and it's difficult to add length afterwards. And it's finished up with a little bow here with your double knitted um, straps. I actually went back afterwards and added a little button here to keep this section from falling, which is a problem I had before. This just kept on like falling, so I added this just quite quickly. Uh, it's hidden anyway and it keeps things nice and tight on both sides of my body. I really like this. It's a drop shoulder design, and again, it also has the shoulder increase line that My Favorite Things Knitwear has come to be known for, perhaps. You can't see as much of the details in this dark color, but I really like it. It has a folded cuff here with a little pearl round. It, I really like that detail. Once again, you make it by making that little cuff on smaller needles, fold it in on itself and knit it together with um, the row from which you started the cuff. It, it's super lovely. It was really annoying to do in this yarn, but so worth it. The sleeves are also shaped nicely where there's quite a lot of decreases, um, which works well because with such a deep yoke and so much ease. It could be easy to have too many sleeve stitches, but I think it was really well designed and really well balanced overall. I made the size small, so not even extra small, and I'm happy with the amount of ease it has. I probably could have gotten away with doing the size under. Uh, I guess it really depends on the amount of ease you want. Maybe at the time I was a little still quite influenced with those big oversized jumpers and I wanted to, to have them. Um, they were it, it was quite a, not a complicated construction, but it definitely was involved and there were more things to, to do, more steps to keep track of, uh, especially with the double knit and button bands. So I, I made sure to check Ravelry for anybody who had notes on it. I made it pretty much at the, maybe a month after it was released or a month or two. So some people had made it and their notes were really helpful. So I linked those in my project page, but you can also find them yourself on Ravelry. The yarn, uh, like I say, it, it's almost the same as the last thing I just talked about, so I won't go too, too much into detail, but this one was actually held with the trio, which was very inelastic, very stringy. It just felt like, like a cotton strand. It was really thin. I don't think it added that much to the gauge, so you could meet gauge with simply this, but I really enjoyed the um, structure that it added to the fabric. So a lot of people will say, is it just an added cost to have a second strand? Like, does it actually add anything? And I will say that I do, I do feel like the fabric is, is stiffer, sturdier, less likely to sag, again, less likely to, to rub and lose all that fabric, those fibers, they're not gonna fall off the net because they're protected by that second strand, I would say. I really like how deep this brown color is, and again, yet how you can see a bit of the marling that the white cotton provides, but the, the dark brown chestnut trio color was really good in helping deepen that brown color. You can see a lot of really nice color combinations on uh, Ravelry because, or Instagram, because it was a really trendy pattern. Tons of people have made it. By the time now, a lot of people have found different yarn combinations. So if you like the pattern, but you don't have access to Isayur or you don't want to spend money on it, there's definitely different options that you can do with this uh, cardigan. It's so unique and original. I know wraps are having their moment right now. And this is definitely a bit of the like warmer, heavier side, so it's not like a nice fingering weight wrap, but it, it's it's so lovely. I've worn it to many, many dates. It goes really well on top of dresses because of the fact that it's really cropped. 
The only annoying thing I would say is the fact it kind of always falls a little bit, depending on how much coverage I want. Like, if I don't mind it being like that, then that's fine. It's not like I need to always keep it wrapped like that. But if I was cold, maybe I would resent the fact that it keeps on, on opening. If I really was that annoyed, I could also include a little button here, which would be hidden. So, yeah, I, I've been toying with the idea of making a second one of these, just because of how much I adore my first one. Again, I would probably make it in a lighter color, like that beige or that light gray that we've talked about. Um, I really like this yarn combination so much that I probably would just do the same, EcoSoft and Trio 1. Isagur really has me in their clutches. But um, I have seen people doing it in unspun yarn, which, depending on which brand, I might find too scratchy. This wool isn't scratchy at all, so that's why I'm thinking why change it if I love it that much. I do feel like it has worn less well than the previous jumper I just showed, which goes kind of against what I just said with the trio adding some stability. I think maybe it's because I've worn it more than the previous one I showed in the same yarn. Or maybe because the yarn is so brown that um, it shows more of the white coming through after some wear. It does feel a little bit more fuzzy as well, but not pilly. I'm not seeing any bubbles, I'm just seeing um, the fuzz in the 3D surface coming through. But again, it's not something that would put me off of making this jumper in the same yarn again. It's something that I guess comes with the field with having such a soft yarn once again. And um, again, mostly what happens is, is happening under the arm and on the sides, but the top of the sweater looks really good. In, in a lot of the circumstances. So yeah, I'm, I'm really proud to be showing this jumper on this episode today. I think it really, really deserves glory and praise. The process was really fun. The instructions were really clear for something that looked a bit more complex than usual. The yarn combination has worked really well, despite being a bit um, of a weird combination and random combination at first. Like why use EcoSoft and Trio 1? I think it works. And uh, I've been able to style this with a lot of different outfits, which I'm really happy about because I don't want to just pigeonhole my knitting with a certain pair of jeans. And that's all I see myself wearing it with. I like the fact that I can mix and match with different items in the wardrobe, obviously. So yeah, uh, I might lose interest in this piece with time because it is so modern and interesting looking. It's not as much of a basic but I still think it's a fantastic thing to wear over dresses, which is not something I'll stop doing. So I think it'll still have a place in the wardrobe for future years to come. Let's move on to the next one. This is the Leon sweater by Petite Knit, and I made this one in Sunday's Garn Sunday held double. I really, really like this jumper. Obviously, I will say that about every jumper that comes on this podcast, but um, or on this episode, rather. But this is a really nice one. It's a really interesting construction. Petite Knit had her contiguous shoulder sleeve construction moment last year. She released this one, then the Leon sweater chunky, and then the kid version. And then she also had the puppy tee, which had the same shoulder construction, and then the Eva cardigan. So if you're not a fan of the jumper version, you can get the t-shirt and cardigan. But yeah, it's a really nice fitted shoulder that then doesn't have that much ease. I think that this falls like literally perfectly where my shoulder ends. It's it's so good. And then it has some positive ease at the underarm. And as you can see, it's um, not too oversized. The sleeves have some ease there. And it's longer than the other sweaters I've shown you because uh, I'm standing in the same spot and you can't see my leggings anymore. I think the yarn has worn really well, which I'll talk about a bit later. But yeah, I made this on four millimeter needles. Um, I really enjoyed the process of making this. It was my first time doing this kind of sweater construction and yet the instructions were really clear. As always, I will say the same thing that I said about My Favorite Things Knit, where Petite Knit's instructions are just tried and tested. Everybody talks about them and I really think it's with reason. Like, she, you don't get that kind of reputation from having bad patterns. So it is deserved and if you don't want to have to think too much about a pattern, you kind of want the 
comfort of knowing that it will be a smooth ride, I recommend Petit Net and My Favorite Things Knitwear. I did a couple of techniques to uh, have some, what is it, jugless stripes, which I think were really successful. I think the finishings on this jumper are also why I'm really proud of it. You get a nice little shul, um, neckline increase, which Petit Net has come to be known for as well, like it's decorative. Folded neck, I think that one had some double knitting to make the sort of scoring line to fold it as opposed to a pearl ridge. The lines are really nice, the stripes, because um, they can start pretty high up here on the yoke, uh, but you still have that bit of white. I think it's, it's nicely balanced. Her one was in the classic navy and white marine stripes. The ribbing is just normal rib. It's not as deep as her other ribbing, so it feels a bit um, more basic in that sense. And it was really addictive because of the stripes. It was it was a joy to work on. I think I did it in two weeks. I did some sewn bind off or tubular. I can never really know after the fact, so I'll rely on my Ravelry notes to know if it was sewn or tubular. But I think yeah, the finishing are the finishing details on this are really nice, and I like the way that I look in this. I like this color on me. This was my. Um, first foray into using those kind of pastel -y purples and I've, I've come to really love them. I had written off purple as a color but then this made me fall in love with lilac. I like this off-white, this is the color Kit, which um, is the perfect shade of off-white that's not too yellowy, creamy, but rather like turning on the grey or the blue. And it's really squishy, I was holding the yarn double instead of I think it's what she did, but you could also use double Sunday, which is the DK version of Sunday. Some people have said that holding Sunday double offers more protection against pilling than using double Sunday single would. Well, that was a hard sentence to say. And I guess I have to agree, because when I look at the underarm of this, it definitely isn't as pilly as my sweater number 23 that I showed earlier. There are a couple of bubbles, which I can literally just pick out right now. I also have the shaver that I can use. Um, there's quite a lot of decreases on the sleeves, but again, because of the jogless stripe, uh, it doesn't... It, it just looks so professional, like, it just looks really, really clean, and I don't hang this sweater because I'm scared of it losing its shape, so I fold it and put it in the drawer, and because of that, it has become a little forgotten this year, but I'm definitely going to keep this out now that we're entering spring. I think this is really nice to wear. It's 100% merino, so it's really, really soft, and... Um, it's still breathable, I don't overheat in it, and yet it keeps me warm um, in Scottish weather. Like, I don't necessarily want to be putting on the heating for the rest of the year, so this would be a nice transitional piece. Um, I'm happy with the sleeve length, the body length, it feels really flattering. I totally would make another version of that, I think I was talking about it back in the days, and I was thinking of maybe doing it in a red, because I really like the shoulder construction and, and the, the fit of this sweater. So I love the fit, I would just change the color and maybe just omit the stripes, unless I found a really nice stripe combination, maybe switch things around and have a dark main color and a light contrast color. But yeah, I think maybe something in, like in a... In a in a poppy blue or something from Knitting for Olive. Maybe I could buy the um, Knitting for Olive Merino and hold that one double in poppy blue. That could be really good. I will take that down. I will note that down. That might happen in the future um, if, if, if they go on sale or something. So yeah, as you can see, I'm super enthusiastic about this one. I would 100% make it again, quite likely. And I really enjoyed everything about this project. I, I hope this video isn't too boring and repetitive. I want to kind of drive home the point of why this one was a success. I really want to differentiate between the sweaters and not just say that I love all of them. I really want you to understand what about each of these sweaters made it win a spot in this roundup. So I, I love them all, but for different reasons. So I hope that I'm able to communicate that well. And I hope that I'm also answering those questions about durability and my feelings about those jumpers even six months later. So yeah, I, I hope that this video is enjoyable, I guess, uh, while we're in the middle of it. And if you're still with me, then let's keep going to the next sweater. This is the Joan sweater by Gregoria Fibers. Um, so this is a sweater that I did in June and finished in July. Again, the sleeves are getting a little bit short and maybe have shrunk with wear. I did the size 1. Um, I think this was my first pattern from Gregoria Fibers. I was um, probably very inspired by what I was seeing on Instagram and maybe even applied to Testnet and then, and then I wasn't chosen. I think this was my first saddle shoulder construction. 
um, and it really made me fall in love with the construction. I was definitely having a moment last summer where I was trying to move away from raglans and maybe even drop shoulders and super eager to test out those new constructions. And uh, as you can see, it really paid off because half of the sweaters here are not raglans or drop shoulders. Uh, this one also has quite a lot of twisted rib details, so maybe that's something else to um, learn from all of these sweaters. What they have in common is I really like twisted rib and it's something that I uh, turn to over and over and, and like to wear. I think this one has a bit too open a neckline. This is something that bothers me when I'm looking at it now. Maybe the twisted rib could have gone like higher and, and become taller. I think with the wear it has opened up, it wasn't always like that. But I think, yeah, it could benefit from a few more centimeters of depth. Uh, I can't remember top of my head how much that was. And then, yeah, the sleeves, I could have added more length. I think that was an issue at the time as well. And I tried to block it to add it, but oh well. So this also, even though it looks worse because of that open neckline and those short sleeves. It adds that ventilation that I'm always craving. And so I don't overheat in those sweaters. Pattern was fine. As always, it's a bit tricky to get used to a new designer's style of writing, but I think that everything was really well explained. I think that there were tutorial links and um, everything was sectioned off in a way that was understandable. I think the beginning was very potato chippy because of the saddle shoulder construction. I'll stand up to show you what it looks like. So at first I was a little worried that you could see a lot of rowing out and you might be able to see in this lighting or in the photos. It's definitely something that blocking helped with. I also think that the arm is huge. Maybe it's something that I um, don't love about this, but it doesn't bother me a huge amount because all that excess fabric kind of gets hidden when I'm wearing it and it doesn't look too off balanced. It's quite cropped, so as you can see, you can see my legging here, so it's shorter than the Leon sweater. There's not that much knitting to be done after you split for the arms. Um, doesn't have any sort of uh, detail apart from the saddle shoulder. There were some short rows to shape things. And what I really like is that there's actually a little pearl ridge to separate the neck, which is a trick that I then used on a different sweater that you'll see in the future. Uh, and then some increases for the neck as well. So the neck is definitely um, has been thought through and there have been some details added to it. I just wish that it was longer. The yarn is BC Garn Lock Lomond in the color Sable 19. And I must say, let's get the elephant out of the room right away. I wish I hadn't used that color. I think it was the color of the original sample, which again has very stylized staged photos with maybe quite a lot of filtering on it. And it has this moody atmosphere. In real life, it just isn't a color that I love. And I'm, I'm strongly considering over dyeing it. It hasn't stopped me from wearing the sweater, which is, I think, a testament to the pattern. That I love it so, so much that I don't mind the color. And also my boyfriend had said that that was one of his favorite colors on me. So that has boosted my confidence, even though I don't believe it. I really think this sweater would be a 10 out of 10 if I had it in a different color. The yarn is extremely soft and comfortable. It bloomed beautifully after wash. It kind of like plumps up. It's wool and spun. It's tweedy. It's really, really soft. Um, I think it comes in 50 grams hanks and I used uh, just over six balls. There is quite a lot of fabric here. This is kind of my criticism of the pattern, but like I say, I still wear it all the time, so um, I don't think... So I'm not, I'm not sure how to feel about that, because I, I don't love the color and I don't love all the excess fabric, and yet I just couldn't not put this sweater in this list today when I was thinking of my top nine sweaters of last year. It still deserves a place, so yeah. I, I think what this really made me crave were more saddle shoulder sweaters, and it also confirmed that this yarn, the BC Garn Lock Lomond, had definitely a place in my yarn stash and would be a yarn that I would reach for in sweaters and would be happy to wear next to skin all the time. So even though maybe this sweater isn't the best, uh, the yarn is and then the construction is. So that's maybe what informed future projects. Would I make this sweater again? I don't think I would make that one because of those issues with too much fabric over there. I would just be seeking a different saddle shoulder pattern, which hint, hint, next sweater. Um, but yeah, if you don't have one of these in the wardrobe and you really like that 
oversized look, then by all means, feel free to, to give this one a go. It, it was a good pattern. So let's now move on to this one. This is the Lake Sweater by Ozetta, and this one is made in Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the color Fennel Seed. So as you can see, I clearly was very inspired by the saddle shoulder construction. And so I started this one in September and finished it in October. I think it was part of my um, autumn knitting plans. So clearly followed through. And I absolutely adore this jumper so much for a lot of reasons. I love the saddle shoulder. I love the pattern. I love the fit. I love the color. I love the yarn. I love the neck edge and the crop fit. So I'll show you here what it looks like on me here. As you can see, we totally resolved that sleeve issue. It doesn't go hugely diagonally that way. The saddle shoulder is really nice and cute. The color is much chunkier, which I love. And I did my little crochet edge um, detail, which I think was my first time doing this. And um, I had messed up the neck the first time and I went back and redid it halfway through the project, which I'm really glad I did because I was feeling mixed feelings about it when that was going on. So I'm happy that I fixed it before continuing because then that reignited my uh, happiness about it. So patterns by Ozetta, I love them. Some people say that they're a bit less structured or the, the structuring doesn't make as much sense as Petite Knit and My Favorite Things Knitwear. They're often compared to each other. I said that they're really clear to me and Ozetta provides a lot of video tutorials as well. So um, I had a, a, an absolute joy working this pr pr pa pattern project. It was very potato chippy once again because of the saddle shoulder construction, lots of ends to weave in though, be aware. I'm really happy with the sleeve length on that one. They are uh, perfect for coverage. They don't get too in the way. There's a big deep ribbing here. Some nice sleeve decreases that were happening for shaping because once again, you start with a lot of stitches, but you don't want to have too many of them by the end. Um, the gauge was 18 stitches. So um, yeah, a bit <clears throat> chunkier than the Jones sweater. Uh, and yeah, it's cropped, which I think is, is just such a cute way to, to do your sweater with your saddle shoulder and the crop fit. I really like how that looks. I feel really cool in this jumper. I feel really me. Uh, like I feel co cool and cute. And the yarn is, is so good. This was my first time using the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino on its own. I had used it before with a mohair. And I feel like when I'm using a yarn with a mohair, I can never really feel what the yarn underneath the mohair is like. Like all I can focus on is the fact that there's mohair. So it wasn't really a good way to um, appreciate the yarn. But on its own, it's really shining. I love this color. It definitely had a big moment or always has a moment on Instagram. It's such a popular color. I think it's even more popular now because Florence has done her fennel seed jacket. Um, I, I think it's, it's something that like surprisingly I love. Like I, I didn't think I would be into such a, a color like that. I like the fact that it's a light color jumper. If I were to remake this, and, and I totally would, I would make it darker. Maybe like in, um, I think Ozetta shared recently like a very dark gray or a black one, which would be so, so, so comfortable and basic. Uh, Ozetta is actually coming up with the V-neck version of that. So V-neck and saddle shoulder, which again, if, if you don't like the round neck, maybe you'd be interested in making the V-neck version. I think I'd still prefer that one. So I probably would make it again maybe in a different yarn, like maybe Gilead by the Rubram Natura, which I always say are is quite interchangeable with the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. But if not, Heavy Merino has a lot of really, really nice neutral colors that I could pick from. And I wouldn't have qualms about making the exact same jumper in the exact same size in the same yarn in the different color. That's how much I love this one. It hasn't worn as well as other things. And again, maybe it's because I've worn that one more but it does feel a little more prone to pilling and also fuzzing up a little bit. So when I'm looking at the worst offender, which is always the under arm and under the sleeves, it does seem fuzzy. I don't think it, it has pilled that much more, but it has fuzzed a little more. So there's less stitch definition, but it still looks professional and wearable to the public. I was worried about rowing out at the beginning, but I think that that also helps um, 
get evened out with a block. So this yarn behaves really nicely after a block, so don't don't just trust what it's looking like when you're working it up. It will like get better a lot. It also softens and relaxes and gets a bit more drapey and flowy because at the beginning it was really stiff. Uh, the ribbing, I like the fact that it's staying open like that, although it has a tendency to singe back in, but you can always block it and reopen it if you want. And yeah, I, I really like the size. I made the size small, like I said, it is a good amount of ease on me without making me look tiny. It's really comfortable, it's wearable indoors, outdoors, it's not too warm, once again is my issue with sweaters, and it's really woolly and soft which are not adjectives that a lot of people put together. So I think Minting for Olive Heavy Merino does a good job at feeling very natural, non-superwash, organic merino, and yet it's not itchy or scratchy. It's not plush, it's just very neutral against your skin. So I absolutely adore this jumper, and, and if you get another takeaway from from this video is is that if you've had that one on your list then I, I strongly recommend that you make it because it makes me feel things. Now let's move on to the penultimate one. This is the Surat sweater by Trico Design MCL. I started this one in October and finished it in November. A lot of you have really loved this jumper on me and the color of it and thank you so much for all the really nice words about it. This is another fingering weight sweater. It was my first time doing a design from Marie Christine and I really liked the way that it was written. It was very no frills, simple, straight to the point and yet explicit and detailed enough. It, it was really good. Um, there were a couple of video tutorials as well if that's something that you're interested in and I also benefited from them for the sleeve detail. I really wanted to make another fingering weight sweater because I loved the fabric of my daily pullover and, and I know that it takes more effort, but it is really worth it. I really like the Kinross for ply, which this is made of, so I was happy to once again use that yarn. I'll stand up to show you the details. So it's a drop shoulder, and uh, it actually just has you seamlessly pick up stitches, so there's not really any sort of detail, like a line. Um, it has a little puff sleeve, which I really like. It's it's really cute how, how that little edge, like thumbs up. It's a really simple technique but it's so effective and it just elevates the whole look by, by looking a bit more interesting than just your classic shapes. And then it has that really nice sleeve detail which what the pattern is known for. Uh, it's a pleat I guess and I have it on the other side as well. And if you've seen my podcast you know that I struggled at first with this not being symmetrical and that was all due to the rate of pickup of my sleeves when I was doing it um, at the start and that affected the pleat at the very bottom so be warned that it's something to keep in mind when you're doing the pattern all of those are in the podcast and in my notes. So apart from that little hiccup with the sleeves I really enjoyed the sweater construction, the process, it really wasn't anything that was out of the ordinary except from those two little details um, the neck, once again, is very open and is a really small ribbing. I guess I've learned that I prefer the ribbing to be taller and chunkier. Mm, but I guess in this one it adds to the delica delicacy of the look and uh, the romanticism. And I really like the length of this one. I would say it's a bit cropped. It's definitely more cropped than the daily pullover that I showed uh, as a first jumper. Maybe as cropped as the lakes pullover. For this one I used just under five skins of Kinross for ply. Um, the yarn is fantastic. I talked about it all at the beginning, so um, no difference here. Except for the fact that it does pick up the fluff and everything much more on this burgundy beadlet color. I don't know if you're going to be able to see if I show up really close. I don't know. Uh, I've worn this one maybe less than the daily pullover because I finished it later obviously and also because it just feels a bit more elevated with the sleeves. It feels like I should have a good reason to wear it. Although maybe I'll just wear this for the rest of the day now because I do feel really cute in it. Uh, I like the color. It's the only thing I have in this color in my wardrobe. So 
Again, if I were to remake this, I think what I was saying in my podcast episode, and I stand by it, is that it's such a classic drop shoulder shape that would be a really good basic. So, and there's not that many fingering weight patterns that I've seen on Ravelry and fallen in love with that would make me want to commit to making a full fingering weight sweater. But this one really is so comfortable and I love the the length of everything so i would probably make it again and just do some decreases in the sleeves to not have that balloon effect and the pleat i would just do it the exact same but remove the pleat and and have some decreases in the sleeves and that would be a really good basic and i would probably use maybe Kinross for apply again maybe in a different color so i can definitely recommend this pattern designer i think she deserves a lot of love and attention to her designs. They're all really romantic looking with lots of little details. Like she has a couple of basics, I think, like a v-neck cardigan, for example, but I think most of her jumpers have a little bit of extra pizzazz to it. And most of them are DK weight, but she has a couple more fingering weight sweaters, which I think would, again, provide that really nice light fabric that is really drapey and is more like ready to wear and not as heavier and chunky as some of the yarns that we use like the lace pullover is really heavy and chunky because of that worsted weight this one feels like i'm wearing nothing like it's it's so light it's um 240 grams and i really like how even my stitches look in this yarn because i usually have a loose tension so my stitches don't always look the neatest but they do in this yarn so i'm really looking forward to using more kinross for apply in the future it's my go-to fingering weight yarn, and this sweater is the example of why I love it so much. So now let's move on to the final sweater of this list. And this is the Holly Jumper by Knitting for Olive. And I love this jumper. It was such a success of last year. I made it for Christmas. I finished it on December 24th, and it was my Christmas jumper. It made me want to make one every year, and I, I, have, I cannot say enough good things about that. It was such a joy to do, to learn, to pick colors for, to wear on Christmas, to take photos for. It was just, it was fantastic. So um, I'll try not to be too gushy and to be actually specific about the things that I love about this jumper, but I'm so happy to be finishing on that high note. Um, so this is a circular yoke jumper with a color work little holly berry detail. The berries are actually 3D bubbles, which you can see if I do this, how amazing is that? Um, I used Knitting for Olive Merino Double for the berries in Claret and then Wooly Net Merino Double for the green and then for the white I used Wooly Net Merino in the white with a strand of fluff Camarose Manistral in the color uh, Pure White 9002 and it actually is kind of shimmery glittery I don't know if the camera is going to pick up on that but just take my word for it so it's a circular yoke, it's cropped, that was my choosing. And the sleeves, <laughs> I think, are also getting a little shorter, but again, it provides ventilation, so I can't complain. I love the neck. I actually uh, didn't follow the pattern. I cast on here and I went down. The pattern actually has you cast on at the neck and fold it and start there. I wanted the option to pick up afterwards, and I'm glad I did. And then afterwards, I added this pearl round which I had learned from my Joan sweater and then just did my one by one rib and folded it in and knitted it with the edge um, and I really like that technique of doing necks. I'm a big advocate that there's no reason to immediately start at the neck and you can always just cast on after and pick it up later which I think just offers more um, <clears throat> control over your decisions afterwards. For the color work it is notoriously tricky this one because there are some rounds with three colors, there's long floats involved but the silver lining is that they really don't happen for many rounds and then all the rest of the sweater is white stockinette. So if you can bear to have a few complicated rounds, then it's really worth it, in my opinion. I did leather bag jacquard, <laughs> I'm standing up for the third time, which I think works really well for those long floats. Um, normally the long floats would have been here, for example, between those two leaves. And I think it worked really well. Like, do, you can barely see a little bit of tension differences but you really can't see green poking through i think this is really good f finishing and it looks so professional and not as sloppy as some of my other color work things i've done in the past where the yarn is showing through i think the fluffy strand of yarn also massively helped 
with hiding any sort of inconsistencies with increases for the yoke or that leather bag jacquard color work thing. So I'd highly recommend making this jumper with a fuzzy strand if you want. And if you're like me and you don't like mohair, I recommend the Manistral because it is um, next to skin soft, not as itchy as mohair, and it provides the exact same effect. And I thought the little glittery effect of the Manistral was a nice touch for a festive jumper. I like that the sleeves are nicely shaped with regular decreases. I like that it's cropped, which again, I said, I think was my own choosing. Um, the pattern has some short rows at the underarm, which I'm not sure if they added much. They definitely have short rows at the back of the neck, which that obviously was helpful. So um, I don't know if you needed to do those second sets, but I did it anyway and it's fine. I think this was a perfect size for me, it's a size small, it really feels perfect in terms again of yoke depth, um, ease. I really like the way that I feel wearing it, I like that it's not too oversized and it just feels like something that is store bought and you just throw on and it fits you well. I obviously like the bubbles and how fun these are, it really didn't take that long to do that whole color work and in fact it was really enjoyable to do because of how satisfying it was to see the motif grow and then afterwards it was just like a bit of a slog to do all the white body. So I'd heavily, heavily recommend this jumper if you want to make it for maybe this year's Christmas, maybe start a little bit early. I did mine in a month and I was working on other projects at the time. So, and it, I mean, obviously I finished it on the day of Christmas, so it was a little bit of a crunch at the, at the end, but uh, I think I didn't even have time to, to block it actually, yeah, so maybe start a bit earlier than I did if, if you really want to have it for Christmas, but it, it really is one of the proudest thing I have, in fact I think that that's why I wanted to make this video today, was because I wanted to talk about this jumper again and how much I love it. So yeah, that's it for me guys, that was more effort than I thought it would be to film this, it was kind of hard to remember all those things about past sweaters and try to say something else than just that was really nice and I really love this yarn because obviously if those sweaters made their way into this roundup it's because I uh, have worn them and I like the yarn and I like the pattern uh, but I think hopefully you were able to see maybe some similarities in the things that I like and understand my style. Maybe let me know down below what is your favorite jumper of all time or even your top nine if you have, uh, if you have that. I'd love to see if there are any of the ones that I've mentioned here that you've made too and you also love and feel the same way about them that I do about mine. And also curious to know if you've been here from the start, if you remember me talking about my daily pullover. I think I talked about that perhaps in my first ever episode as a work in progress. I think it was there or my second episode. But yeah, have you been there since the start? Let me know. I've decided to rank all of the, num the jumpers on all the dimensions like pattern, yarn, the experience of knitting it, the cost effectiveness of the sweater, and the durability of the yarn over time. So that's five different dimensions, I gave all of these a score out of 10 and I added everything up and I've made this little table here, I thought it would be quite fun to to show all of that. So I'll just leave that here before the outro in case you were curious about the numbers and I guess now we know what my favorite sweater of all time from last year is. But that's everything from me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's any other types of videos you'd like to see from me. And if not, I'll see you all next time in the podcast episode. Have a great rest of your week. Happy knitting and see you all later, guys. Bye!